So, next uh, we have Progress Network, Send Progress Addresses, and again, we have new international identifiers. Now, I would like Well uh, yeah, Yuhi to join us on stage. He is one of the uh, producers, one of the brains behind the Progress Addresses and the Progress Networks. In particular, he worked on the specifications, technical specifications, as you saw yesterday. Benjamin is in charge of the um, technical drafting, but he said he was not alone. He has a team of R&D specialists who work with him, reporting him um, information uh, back to him uh, to design the languages and uh, uh, the protocols and so on. And in particular, here we are going to be talking about the uh, technicalities behind uh, the programs addresses. So thank you, Wahil. Um, uh, so it, as we heard, it is necessary to register a programs address to access the programs sites. As uh, it's written here, is the uh, identifiers of the program sites. Could you tell us about the generic format of um, program's address before you go into the technical details? Uh, well, good evening. Uh, Alexei showed you yesterday what is uh, the program's address, but we'll start from scratch. If you don't mind, the uh, program's address is something that looks like this. As you can see on this slide, you have the asterisk and star sign in the middle, network name, star, site name. Then you have the site name, uh, as uh, is obvious. So here it's written in Latin language, uh, then in simplified Chinese in Cyrillic language. So a program addresses an international address, and like the URLs, it's not present in URLs or domain names, they're written in ASCII format. And when the names were internationalized, the, the basic working was not changed. I mean, it's still ASCII, but you have a code that allows you to change, to transform an, inter an international text into ASCII format. So you see that a program's address can be written from left to right, to right to left, um, in which case the network name would be on the right side and the site name on the left hand side if we're writing from right to left. So when we designed the, the program's address, we thought that the user could see the program's address either in a site or a web page and maybe on a poster in a, in, on a bus, or he could be uh, given uh, the address by dictation. So it must be easy to identify whatever the uh, way it is uh, communicated. The uh, bottom line is that we had to limit the number of uh, possibilities in mixing the scripts. For instance, could you mix Arabic and Cyrillic? Uh, it's, but it's not written the same way, so this is something we had to put restrictions on. And what allows you to define a uh, program's address is the specification, the IFAP.0 uh, um, specification, the International Program's Address Pattern, which, as we'll see, um, has a corresponding specification. <laughs> so this is a specification format which we call RFC. The RFCs are the uh, basic internet specifications which are pub published by IETF. So we uh, reuse the same format. You see that this one was published on the 5th of March last is uh, accessible online and it describes the purpose of these programs addresses. So, in fact, the idea is to define what we use to uh, write a program's address. We use the, the Unicode, of course. What are the rules for the format of this address, the type of characters that can be used, and what are the restrictions as to the use of certain characters to avoid any security problems, for instance. Alors, 
Uh, yeah, about the pattern, the short and simple pattern. So it means that behind these simple looking uh, addresses, a site name and a network name, or network name and a site name, in fact, there are different categories of networks from which you, or where you can uh, uh, put a number of uh, frequency addresses. Could you tell us about this? Yes, of course. So the uh, frequency network, which is open to everyone, where it's uh, the easiest, uh, uh, it's very easy to publish a, a site, is frequency star. See, frequency star. Uh, of course, for the other um, writing systems, uh, we have what we call public frequency networks, PFN which are adapted, it's like a transcription of the word fragrance into the various um, uh, scriptures. Uh, so uh, it's the network where you publish your site and address at a reasonable price. Now, if you are a brand and you, you don't necessarily want to have fragrance or something, you want to have your network name and your site name, so you can uh, reserve a dedicated frequency network. We'll see later on what this means. And something more special, in a way, is the internal frequency network. It's a bit like the dedicated frequency network. It's an organization, for instance, that wants to have its own frequency network to be used internally, in-house. So that would be only at the internet level. So here again, all the internal frequency network would be called internet star site name or any uh, corresponding name in the various languages. So it's still the same name, but it's uh, reserved for the internet. It will not be residing on the same site. So the technical operation maybe we'll see some other time. Now, if I want to. Uh, um, uh, put online my first frequency site, I will use the public frequency network and I will choose the name, whichever name I want to give my site, uh, provided it's, uh, it, it complies with the uh, specification, not mixing different types of uh, uh, languages, it will start with frequency star star sign, and uh, then you said uh, the site name, you spoke about the transcription, so could you tell, uh, show us what it looks like, although we may not be able to understand? I will not only show them to you, I will play them to you in various languages. Uh, in Chinese, in uh, Japanese, uh, I would not be able to play it for you. And so, um, linguistic category is a set of languages that use the same uh, writing system. For instance, Latin languages, Latin, that uh, means French, English, uh, etc. You have um, Chinese, which is a category of its own. You have both the simplified or traditional Chinese. You have also Japanese. It's only one language, but using several uh, writing uh, systems. So for each uh, language category, you will uh, listen Froggins. to words frogans. In Japanese now. Korean. Korean. Frogans. It's like, like province. Cyrillic. Frogans. 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 In Thai language now. Greek. Frogans. This is what it sounds like. I hope you enjoyed it. So, we have um, correspondents in different countries of the world uh, who helped us with this. So, of course, they pronounce this very uh, clearly. Maybe in real life it will not sound as clear. Uh, we did not. 
Fro Fugansa, uh, Frogans. So we didn't always try to stick with uh, the original sound, but uh, uh, were, when the language had its specificities, we wanted to, it to sound specific. So whatever the writing system I'm using, as you said, um, well, for at a reasonable price, I can uh, obtain a Frogans address and a, a public Frogans network. But more than this, you have also the dedicated programs networks, which I know Romuel will be telling us more about, but you could start now to say a few words. It's a different case, in fact, not only do you want to handle, manage the site part of the Frogan's address, but also the network part. Yes, uh, uh, Frogan's network is a set of a group of sites under the same network name, so the dedicated Frogan's network can um, be used by, it could be for a community, it could be a generic term, for instance, book star sign, it could be a brand name. So we did some heavy work to protect the brand names. We heard a presentation about this yesterday. It could be a geographical name, Paris uh, star sign something. Uh, all the uh, people who are knowledgeable in these uh, G uh, TLDs uh, will be aware of this, but it could be also product category. So why would we like to group several sites uh, under the same name? Yeah. Well, for instance, if you, if you register a network name, you are the owner of whatever sites are registered behind. So whether you want to keep everything for yourself or you create certain sites that you make available uh, to, uh, say, your users, customers, and so on. For instance, um, social media would be whatever name a star sign, and then you would have family names. But I, I would be, says um, Jean-Emmanuel, I, I would be the holder of the Frogren site. I have the network, I will be the holder of the Frogren site, and it's a service that I make available to a third party. Yes, yes, so you're right, we'll see this later on. Um, so you own your network name and you do whatever you want with the addresses that you have registered with, under this name. All right, so, I, if I get a network, I get uh, the title to all the addresses under this network, and this is for someone who can manage quite a number of uh, frozen sites. Yes, but it's all, you always have frozen star sign if you just want an, an address and a site. And of course, all this is international. Um, yes, just point of, one point of clarification. We started with a number of linguistic categories. Um, the most widely used, and it's uh, obvious that there will be others, and as and when uh, it is uh, requested by the international community, we'll uh, respond to uh, whatever needs for other languages. So we'll have to think about it, uh, cooperate with the uh, said um, requester, and, and open to other languages. Okay, you told us about the technical specification that defines the pattern of Frogan's addresses, but there are yet other rules uh, from the moment I want to choose a Frogan's address. Yes, indeed, you have the security issues, you have uh, problems of a confusion possible if someone registers a brand that sounds or looks like the one I have registered, which was the case for PayPal, where someone had um, uh, had registered a PayPal with a Cyrillic A, uh, therefore uh, confusing the consumers and um, at their expense and, and the PayPal's expense. So this is the kind of thing that you need to uh, clarify. So we have the first specification, which is the um, international fragrance pattern, and uh, you have fragrance uh, uh, address composition rules, which adds 
uh, yet another filter at the time of registration, and it's the specification to explain what is the fragrance address basically and how it can be used in particular by a fragrance player at the resolution stage. But uh, FAP, in fact, is a filter that is active at the registration of the address to avoid any confusion with other existing names. Of course, there are many rules that uh, must be put in place to avoid any confusion. Fortunately for us, uh, we have more than 10 years of experience in the web uh, around ICANN also. We have uh, the Unicode consortium that defines a set of characters that allow you to write text in the world, uh, whole wide world, and also rules to avoid any confusion. Then you have the work around ICANN and the registries and registrars, uh, which accumulated uh, databases of uh, anti-confusion rules. And you have other resources, such as, for instance, a project that is called CLDR, Common Local Data Repository, which um, uh, works with Unicode and allows uh, software designers to design software pieces that will be easily adapted to the languages of users, so that when you do a new uh, mobile um, uh, operating system, it's easy to roll it out with different languages. So we um, learned from all this. So we made a number of choices because the standards sometimes have different levels of security. So we were rather conservative at the beginning, uh, whilst remaining open to the possibility of opening. If the users say you were too restrictive, could you authorize that such or such combination of characters? Uh, so we uh, need to be um, responsive to the uh, demands of the community. Community. Uh, however, we do consider that the uh, international fragrance pattern um, not to change too much, whereas the fact that the rules for registration will evolve uh, with the feedback from the users as and when required. You see, we're lacking time, so we have to speed through the presentation. But if uh, future users have questions in the audience, please uh, do uh, ask. Gwendal, any questions? Questions about fragrance addresses? Not quite so, so while it seems it was very clear. Thank you.